Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome back to another devlog for my unnamed pirate game. If you're new here, the plan is to build a multiplayer pirate-themed survival game set in a world where the Greek myths are real. You'll gather resources, build fortifications, modify your ship, and try to make a profit, all while fending off monsters and other players. In this devlog we're going to revisit combat, if you can even call it that, because it's currently in a barely functional state and essentially just boils down to spam clicking your mouse. The pistol has unlimited ammo and no reload time, which is, well, stupid to say the least, so the first order of business is to deal with that. So I've just taken care of the easy part of the problem. You can still spam click with the pistol, but I've limited the ammo you have, so you can't do that forever without interacting with one of these ammo box things. Of course the more difficult part, or at least the more time consuming part of the problem remains. I need to limit the frequency at which you can shoot, and we need some sort of animation to let players know when they're reloading. Thinking you should be able to shoot when you can't yet would be really frustrating, and could cause property damage. I want to make it easy for people to actually like my game. But the last couple days have been really boring. I've been avoiding doing animations for a long time because it's not something I find very exciting, but somehow it's been even worse than I expected. Getting the basics sorted out was pretty straightforward. The player shoots, there's a small shoot animation, and then it transitions to the reload animation. But from there, things get really tedious. If the player just shot his last bullet and has no ammo left to reload the gun with, the reload animation shouldn't play. If the player switches weapons while reloading, the animation should restart next time he switches back. If the player refills his ammo, the animation needs to play as soon as he pulls out the pistol again. If the player refills his ammo while reloading, the animation should just continue and not restart. I think you get the point, there's quite a range of possible scenarios, and these are just the ones I have addressed so far. There's probably at least a few more edge cases that I have yet to think of or run into. Now maybe you've done some animating yourself, and you're sitting here thinking something like, well that's not so bad, and I'd agree if this was a single player game. Unfortunately it's not, so in my case most of the logic that would normally be used to decide when an animation needs to play is located on the server side, and of course in order for players to be able to see animations they need to happen on the client. This made things a bit more complicated because I had to ensure that clients have all the necessary information at the right times to decide for themselves which animation is the correct one to play, and the code I've written in the last 24 hours to get things working feels pretty filthy. Anyways, we now have a reload animation, and I've also ensured that the server doesn't let you shoot while reloading, so the flintlock is now a lot closer to working as intended. It's probably obvious, but this animation is very much temporary. Next up is fixing the sword, because that too is still just a weapon of spam click destruction. Two whole weeks. That's how long it's been since I touched the project. I took a break because I wasn't really sure what exactly I wanted to do with the sword, and as is often the case, indecision led to no work getting done. Instead, I spent those two weeks fixing issues in the multiplayer code, and I started dabbling with music production. That's been something I've wanted to try out for quite some time now, and I figured that this little break was as good a time as any to give it a shot. I've only just scratched the surface of the learning process, so there's nothing to show yet, but hopefully in the future I'll be able to make some decent music for the game. Anyways, it's been like 6 weeks since the last devlog, so it's about time I get back to work, and I started today off by reviving the Trello board. I'm tired of finishing something I was working on and then having to think about what to do now, particularly because I often want to go implement the next cool thing, but that usually doesn't match with what needs to be added in order to get a proper gameplay loop going. It might not be that noticeable in these videos, but this game doesn't feel like a game yet. It's just a disjointed collection of various mechanics. You can shoot cannons, but there's no process for acquiring cannonballs or actually loading the cannon. You can damage and sink other ships, but the only way to get a new ship is to leave your crew and recreate it. You can harvest resources, but there's literally nothing you can do with them. You can bail and repair your ship, but there's no way to acquire the planks that you need to do so. See what I mean? A game needs mechanics, but having mechanics doesn't make it a game. In order for it to be playable, those mechanics need to fit together and complement each other nicely. There needs to be like a continual flow from one mechanic to the next. Currently, this project has no flow. I had sort of stopped using my Trello board because I would always forget to update it after I did something, so it usually didn't reflect the state of the project very well, and maintaining it felt like more work than it was worth. However, I've now repurposed it a bit as a more well-defined and comprehensive list of things that need to get done in order to reach the point where you could call the game playable. I'm hoping that'll help me avoid situations where I'm trying to decide what I should do next, because as long as I pick something from that list, I know I'm on track. 
Anyways, I'm going to do the unthinkable for a programmer and go outside for a bit. I'm going on an adventure. And then I'm going to get to work on sword combat, but this time for real. Alright, I'm back and we've made progress. Before we talk about that though, I think you should see what happened as we were trying to test and record clips of the new mechanics. It was... well, I'll just let you watch it. Oh, what the... Why am I so fast? I am stuck in place. Have you yet to load other... Okay. Oh, I, I just was... bounced. Hold on, hold on. What is going on? What is this? Holy what shit. What did I do? I am flying away. <laughs> okay, now I can walk normally again? Holy... I am... <laughs> I am literally bouncing. Yeah, 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 same. What is... Okay, now, now I'm gone. Okay, this is gonna give me a seizure. Anyways, first and foremost, we have an attack animation. As well as a block animation. Super simple, nothing fancy, and they'll definitely be replaced eventually because at some point you'll be able to actually see your hands, and that'll require at least tweaking the current animations to fit properly. Along with the animations, I made it so that spamming left click while attacking will only do damage once per attack animation, which is obviously how it should be. During this entire clip I was spamming the left mouse button, but it took the full 10 hits to kill. Then we have the actual mechanics. Obviously there's the regular left click to attack and right click to block, but what's key is how those can now be used when fighting someone. If you successfully block an attack, you'll have a 1 second window to perform a repost or a counter attack, which will do double damage unless your opponent manages to block that as well. In addition, a successful block on your part will sort of stun the other player. I say sort of because it's not really a typical stun as they'll still be able to block and move around, but they'll be unable to attack again for a short amount of time. It's not long, so it may be a bit hard to tell in this clip, but when you're actually at the controls and you try to attack after getting blocked, you can definitely feel the delay. Of course, this could potentially lead to situations where you and another player are just constantly blocking and counterattacking each other without anyone ever taking damage. To try and at least somewhat address this, I've also made it so holding your block won't protect you indefinitely. After one second of blocking, your block effectiveness decreases by half, meaning that although you won't take full damage, you will still take some. As you can see here, when I block the first attack I'm completely unharmed, but when I hold my block through the second attack I take 5 damage. I'm hoping that all of this will give swordplay a decent amount of depth, although it's definitely going to need a lot of tweaking. The length of all the delays will almost certainly change as time and testing goes on, but I think this is a good starting point. I'm also considering making the decrease in block effectiveness a gradual one instead of the sharp 50% drop after one second of holding it that we have right now. After helping me record these clips, my friend Oscar and I had a little duel on the beach to see if we could use these mechanics in a proper fight, and it was a bit of a mess. Part of the problem was that the game sensitivity is really high, higher than what I'm used to when playing other games, so my aim was definitely off. The bigger issue though is that there's no client side prediction, meaning that you'll press a key but only see yourself move a few moments afterwards because your game is waiting for the server to process the input and send back a response. This makes precise movement extremely difficult, which basically resulted in us running a bunch of circles around each other. I've definitely got my work cut out for me in the multiplayer department, which I'm not looking forward to, but until I get that stuff sorted out it's unfortunately going to be impossible to tell if the combat mechanics are any good or not. Anyways, swordplay needs to be straightforward enough for new players to quickly pick up the basics, but I want to stay far away from simplistic left click spam, so I guess that's the usual easy to learn, hard to master sweet spot that I'm aiming for. I think so far we've got a good start, but if you have any other ideas for ways to make combat more interesting, or how to give it more depth, feel free to leave a comment below, I'll make sure to read it and respond. Since we've been working on gear in this devlog, I was hoping to also finish up the tasks on the grappling hook checklist, but unfortunately I quickly ran into some issues due to the way I set that stuff up. I don't think I'd have time to get it done and still upload this video this weekend, so we're going to wrap it up here. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to obliterate the like button, smash subscribe, and leave nothing left of the notification bell. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.